This time I've got a low grade 37 LC70 LCD television from 2007. This one here has a mind of its own. Sometimes it turns on, sometimes it doesn't. So let's see why it's not turning on. So this is a TV I was given. As you can hear, it's got static sound, but no picture. I was told that if it's turned on and off multiple times, it will eventually come on. So that was the first time. This time it came on. You can see the channel number on the screen and the snow. So that's what the problem with this one is. Intermittently it turns on, other times it doesn't. So let's take this one apart and see if we can get to the bottom of this one. I got the back off this TV and I already see what the problem is. Now do you see what the problem is? Yes, Puff the Magic Capacitor has popped its top. Uh, I bet you that's all that's wrong with this one. Is that it's not powering up the backlights. That appears to be what's going on in this is the backlights aren't lighting up. And when you turn it on a couple times, that cap builds up a charge. So let's pop the power supply and see if I can fix this thing in record time. I'm probably right in the middle of the shot, aren't I? Disconnecting various connectors for the high voltage. This is the these are the ones for the, the lamps down here. Okay, and a couple of screws. This board will lift out and we can move it over to the other bench and swap out the bad parts. One nice thing about these conventional LCD TVs is that they are generally pretty reliable. Okay, let's transport this over to the repair bench. So looking at the board, we see that a couple of the caps have already been changed. Somebody's already done half the work for me. These two have already been changed. That one's been changed and that one's been changed, which are two of the ones that normally do go bad. But this big monster here has not. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say, this is the one that's at fault this time. Now I just got to find one. I'm changing as little as possible on this because this TV will be one that is just given away after the fact. It's my, oh, my solder iron cooled down a bit there. Okay, lead free solder. So here's the one that's bad. It's a 35 volt, 1500 microfarad. If you look at the top, you can see that the top is ever so slightly raised. It's bad. We can measure it. We'll measure it both on the ESR meter and on the conventional crap capacitor tester. Short the leads together. Crap capacitor tester says it's only 573, 585. So it's lost, it's lost, it's microfarads, because this is 1500. If I put it on the ESR tester that I just fixed in one of the last videos that the leads have broken on, we will see that the ESR on this is through the freaking roof for sure. 0 0.7, 0 0.76, 1500 microfarad should be like well, point 0.1, between point 0.1 and point 0.2, and this is point 0.7. So let's find a replacement for this. I don't have a 1500, but I do have a 1000 and a 560. If I parallel these two together, I will make 1560 microfarads, which is more than enough. So I'm just going to have to bend the leads over and connect one to the other. This one here, the leads look to be relatively short. I wonder if I've got another one that the leads are a little bit longer on. We'll just check here. In my box of components. And these all look to be about the same length leads. Oh, there's one that's a little longer. Ok, 
Damn, I was looking for that. Well, now I know where the bit is to open up the fairing on my Harley. I stuffed it in with my other tools and forgot where I put it. All right, so let's, uh, we'll, we'll connect the two of these together. Positive around positive and negative around negative and solder them together. Make sure I've got room on the board, which I should have no problem. Yeah, I got plenty of room here. To mount it with the, the other cap sitting over to the side. Just gonna make sure I'm putting it in the right way here. Ooh, good thing I checked that. Gotta put it on the other side. Otherwise, Houston, we will have a problem. Good thing I checked that. That's always the first thing. If you're gonna be mounting caps uh, together with each other, always make sure that you've got the clearance before you commit to soldering leads on. So, in this case, I'll kind of just twist the lead around my positive and negative terminal, and uh, then my positive can go in like that. Yeah, that'll work. Make sure that I've got room to mount that part. Yeah, plenty of room there. Okay, so we'll, we'll tack the two leads together. When you parallel capacitors, you actually drop the ESR as well. I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but when you parallel two caps together, and that's why a lot of times you'll find in power supplies, you'll find multiple caps that are in parallel, and you're wondering why do they have, like, why will they have three 1000 microfarad caps in parallel rather than just put one 3300? Well, the reason it's done is because three 1000 microfarad caps. Ca Try that, say that five times quick. Three 1000 microfarad caps will provide lower ESR than a single 33. And that is why it is done. Just gonna clear out the solder out of the holes here so I can mount this part and we'll plug this in and see if it works. I hate these things, they don't work that well. But when there's a lot of solder to remove, you use less wick when you use one of these. Okay, now I can drop the new one in, observing the polarity of course. work just like that. So this TV once it's this is mine. I got this one for free. So basically what I'll do with this set is this will go up for sale and uh, see if I can get you know, 50 bucks for it. That's usually what these sets go for when they're working. If not, it'll the price will drop every week until it goes away. But um, that should that should fix this one. Let's mount the board and see if it turns on. One nice thing about having a crane, even though it's quite not really a crane, it's more of just a couple tripods that are held together with zip ties. But it lets me get the camera way up. I probably should invest in a proper a proper jib. Voltage leads for the lights. 
All right, let's uh, power it up and turn it on and see whether this thing lights up. Okay, we hit the power button on the remote. And the power light's flashing green. Now are we gonna get snow and noise? Or just noise and nothing on the screen? We got it light. It's lit up. There we go, it's fixed. We get a cable on there, we'll get some channels programmed in and see how it looks. All right, there it is. Got my security cameras on there. Just a, just a an analog feed from my in-house cable system. So we know that it works. So that's that solves this problem. Let's try one of the other channels that I can get, like seven, which is Story TV coming off of a, an antenna, going through a modulator. That works. How about five, which is uh, CNN coming off a cable box? And two, which is another, this should be the Discovery, Discovery Channel, oh, zero two. This should be Discovery Channel that's on here. There we go. Discovery Science. That's coming off another cable box, so everything, everything's working here. So this one's working. So that's how simple this one was. One cap that failed in the power supply. This one here. I just happened to notice that when I pulled the back off it, like it's not blown completely. It's, the top's not bulging totally. I just happened to notice when I looked at it, I thought, see that top doesn't look quite, doesn't look quite flat. Just just the way the light caught it, it's just, okay, this is this one's bad and there, there it was one cap and when we measured it the ESR had gone up a bit but the capacity had dropped from 1500 to about 500 so what was happening was it wasn't charging up there was too much excessive ripple which was probably one of the supplies that supplies power over for the um, went on out here it's pouring with rain and it's the paper carrier delivering the paper that's right hang that hanger on the door and go back and now you've just made your five cents for delivering the paper or whatever they pay them okay so uh, <laughs> this one's done this will be another set that I can say put up for sale and uh, try to find this one a new home and the fact that I got the remote with it as well is a bonus because a lot of times people trying to get rid of a TV without a remote is, uh, well, it, uh, is a little more difficult. When I've got a remote, it's a lot easier to get rid of it. A couple scuffs on it. Other than that, I think it'd be a, a, a perfect TV for someone, you know, that is just looking for a TV for their basement or something or, or they're going to build it into a cabinet, like into a wall unit, not wall unit, but yeah, t TV stand is covered. Because I don't know that that's going to buff out. Maybe it will. There's some scuffs on here, but... Oh, you know what? I bet you they had something stuck on there. It seems like it's... Uh... Yeah, it looks like tape. They may have had like a... Um, a webcam or a, a sensor for like a, a game console, right? A Wii or whatever the games are that had the sensor that detected you moving around. Anyway, um, it's working. Okay, so now I've just tested on my HDMI input on my other cable box that's in the workshop here. And as you can see, the HDMI input works as well. So this one's done. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.